Hi, everyone. Hope you can hear me. Just hear me up there. Um, I'm Dixie Baker. I work for a small health care consulting company. And the work I'm going to uh, report today, I'm doing um, with one of, my, one of my clients, Genetic Alliance, and the PICORNET pro uh, program. Um, I'm just going to talk to you, introduce you to make sure you know what PICORNET is all about, and especially what the PPRN and CDRNs are in that, in that whole uh, system. Um, talk about why we're using, uh, trying to do EHR extraction and what that means, where we want to be, and uh, describe a proof of concept that we're just now undertaking. Um, and I, I would welcome your, your feedback on this. Uh, yeah, as you'll see, I'll, I'll talk about a few things that we're looking for, and if you have potential solutions, I'd be interested in, in talking to you. Um, PCORnet is a national, it's a, uh, PCORnet is the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Network. It's sponsored by PCORI, which is the Patient Outcomes Research, um, Patient-Centered Outcomes Research uh, Institute. Uh, so it's public-private funded initiative. And PCORnet basically comprises two basic kinds of, of networks. Uh, the CDRNs, which is the, the clinical data research networks, which are part of the healthcare system. They're all affiliated with a healthcare system of some sort, so they're clearly within the HIPAA regulated space. And then there are patient powered research networks, PPRNs, which are more outside the HIPAA regulated environment, and they're more like uh, PHRs than they are EHRs. And um, the Genetic Alliance is the coordination, uh, co coordinating center for the PPRNs. There are 13 CDRNs and there are 20 uh, PPRNs, and each PPRN focuses on a particular, not necessarily uh, health disease, but a, a, a specific health condition. Um, and the work I'm going to talk about is sponsored by the PPRNs. The la in uh, September of last year, we did a study of the PPRNs, and we found that every one of the PPRNs wants to have EHR data. Um, and, and all of them, so far, most of the data that they have are collected through surveys. It's, uh, it's important to recognize that the PPRNs, the, the patients involved in the PPRNs are inherently motivated because I, m most of them either have these, these conditions or they have someone in their family that has, their, has that condition. So they're highly motivated to help the PPRNs get their EHR data um, to be used in research because they want new knowledge to be discovered quickly. Um, a number of the providers have actually implemented a uh, blue button out there but uh, in some of them, you can use blue button to download uh, CCDA. Some of them you can blue, uh, implement, um, use blue button to download a, CC, a, a PA, uh, PDF document. But in most of the cases, number one, there's no standard for a portal. And so it's difficult for an app to find the blue button button. Um, and let alone discriminate between whether that button downloads a CD, CDA or a, or a PDF. And, uh, and so, so, uh, so there's, no, there's no standard for, for downloading it, so it's difficult for them to really implement apps to go out and find, then find these CCDAs, which is really what they, what they want to do. Um, I think probably everybody here knows that the legal and regulatory environment out there now and the technical environment is ripe for exactly what we've been talking about, uh, restful access to fire uh, resources. Um, it's really important to, to remind everybody that the HIPAA privacy rule requires that if a patient Come, comes to a doctor and says, I want a copy of my CCDA. I want an electronic copy of my CCDA. By law, the provider must provide it in the format that the patient requests if they're capable of doing so and if they have a certified EHR app 
technology right now, they're capable of doing so. So that's working on our, that's really working in our favor and that's what we're, and the PPRNs are leveraging to get their EHR data. Um, CMS has an objective of 2018 to enable a patient to use an app to uh, obtain a copy of their, of, their electro, of their EHR data. But the PPRNs are really think that they can accelerate that, that they can, they think through consumer demand um, and, a, and a competitive market can really uh, motivate providers to implement these, these app-based access to EHR data more quickly than 2018. And that's, uh, that's we're, we're behind that whole movement. Um, here's what we really want to happen. We have over here on the left, we have the, um, a participant app, and we have a researcher. We have the, the hospital or the physician up there at the top, and the PPRN, Patient Powered Research Network. And what we want to happen is that we give the individual, a, the participant, an app, and we say, use this app to access your EHR data and have it sent, send it to the PPRN of your choice the one that you're, you're working with. Um, and so what would happen then once the OAuth uh, 2.0 is implemented, the, um, the hospital will then go back to access, the authorization server will actually go back to the, to the participant and say, do you want to allow this access? This app wants to access your EHR data. Do you want to allow it? And then the, uh, the participant would go, yes, I want to allow that. So once that's done, the, um, the EHR data, the fire resources would be sent to the PPRN. After that, the PPRN would come back to the individual and say, if you'd like to set up the permissions on how your data can be used in research, come in here, we have your data, set up the, these permissions, so that ultimately researchers can come through the PPRN, query the data, and be able to accelerate uh, the, the advancement of medical, medical knowledge. That's the vision. Um, we're just now undertaking a proof of concept, and there are several players in this proof of concept. Peer is the, is the data registry component. Peer is the uh, platform for enabling, for engaging everyone responsibly, P-E-E-R, and that platform was developed by Genetic Alliance, and it allows virtually anybody to make their health information available for research purposes under rules that the individual themselves define. Uh, Genetic Alliance is partnered with a company called Private Access that allows this to happen, um, so that individuals can, for example, say, my data can be used for breast cancer research at University of Southern California, or by research, any research that Dr. Dixie Baker is leading, or, you know, or they can say, my health information can be used by any researcher for any purpose you want. Um, so they can, they can uh, define these rules at a very granular level, um, and they could change them at any time. So that the participants find that extremely attractive. Um, and uh, private access not only provides the management of the permissions, but also provides OAuth 2 services, OpenID Connect services. So the second player is we're partnered with, uh, with Yale. And um, there's a, they have an application that, they, that was developed between Yale Medical School and the Yale New Haven uh, Health System. It's called Hugo. And Hugo is an app that enables individuals to access their own EHR data, or it also enables individuals to collect data from their Fitbit or any kind of a home device and send the data to their EHR. Um, and Hugo is, uh, we're, we, we plan to use Hugo as our app uh, for this proof of concept that we would give to participants the same, go get your health EHR data and send it to your PPRN. Um, it's now in use at Yale, 
Uh, but now it's using proxy kind of access, my term, but basically the, the app, because the, the fire access and OAuth 2 are not out there right now, uh, what it does now is ask the individual to provide their password. Can I use your password to log into the portal, get your EHR data, and sit, download it to your PHR? Um, and of course, my background being primarily security, I'm not comfortable with an app that asks somebody to give them their password. So, so we're all looking forward to the day when that's not necessary, but that's, that's what it's working, that's how it's working today. And that is the in, that will be our interim solution as well. Um, the last part of our proof of concept is number one, we have to build uh, RESTful interfaces into the PPRN so that they can accept the data that, that are sent to them. And secondly, we do need to implement ETL technology because the, 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 all of PCORnet, the CDRNs and the PPRNs, use the, a, a common data model, which is not FIRE. So we also need to do these bi-directional transfer, transformations between FIRE and CDA, between CDA and FIRE so that we can tell the app what to look for, and between FIRE and CDAs to trans, transform the data that we receive that will be FIRE resources into, CD, uh, into uh, CDM data elements. And I'll show you just a, a quick snapshot of CDM right here. This is the... Uh, common data model it was that is used by all PCORnet. Um, it was developed through the FDA Mini Sentinel program, or it's based on the CDM developed for the Mini Sentinel uh, program. And I, I did a mapping between the CDM and FIRE, and probably um, two-thirds of the data elements will map directly, and the others you just, you know, some you can kind of kind of uh, infer where you would get those data, but they aren't direct, direct mapping. So it's not a really one-to-one -one mapping between the two. Um, these next slides, they have some, I know you can't see these, but hopefully you can see them when you, when you get an actual copy. But this first one shows how our interim solution would work using the password app, the, the proxy app. Um, so even in this case, the individual, the participant would bring up the app and would log into the app using OpenID through, through Peer. So they would log in through Peer and Peer would say, do you want to get your, send us your EHR data? And if the answer is yes, then it would go back to, back to the, the Hugo app and Hugo would ask them to send the, let them use their password they would go in through the portal, obtain the EHR through the portal, down, and download the EHR into their PHR, and also send a copy to the PPRN. Um, at that point, the individual would log into Peer and assign the permissions, and then ultimately the researchers would be able to access the data. In the longer term, we want to have an approach that's very much like the, the, Argon, the Argonaut implement, uh, implementation profiles where they actually download fire resources and those fire resources go into the, are, are transformed into CDM elements and are, are persisted in the P, uh, PPRNs and accessed by, provide, by uh, researchers. Um, I forgot these builds, I should have taken them out. Okay, just to give you some screens, this is, this is based on what Hugo looks like today, but basically it would say something like, would you like to put your health information, um, make it available for medical research, and they could say, uh, you can do so privately and under your own rules, and if you're interested in more, you just click tell me more, at which point it would present this down at the bottom is an iframe that we already have deployed in over 40 different um, advocacy groups primarily. Um, and once they get to this screen, they can do, uh, they can log in OpenID through private access. Um, and then once they've logged in through Open, uh, OpenID and they've said, yes, I want to send my data to the PPRN, then it would, uh, it would, um, give them the opportunity, they would go um, 
import my clinical records, yes, and then it would redirect back to Hugo. This is a Hugo interface. This is where they bring up the, the they say, which one of these places, where, where, where do your health, uh, do, do your EHR data reside? They pick Yale. At that point, the Hugo asks them to give them their, their uh, password and go out and they get the data and they send it to the PPRN. That's the interim solution. Ultimately, we want this to be fire. They go out and get the data, fire resources, and send them to the PPRN. Okay. And that's where they send it to peer. Uh, current status. Um, Genetic Alliance and Yale um, have uh, the Yale Center for Outcomes. Um, has, have agreed to work together on the, on the proof of concept. Um, we have presented the concept to the PPRN Design Day a couple of weeks ago, and we have completed the mapping between the CDM and the FIRE, although um, we are constantly updating that as, as FIRE uh, continues to develop. And the task is in the queue for funding, so we're, so we're looking forward to actually starting to build this capability, which the PPRNs uh, desire. Okay, the last slide that you'll see, I have references to a number of things I've mentioned here. <laughs>